Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the Subtlety Rogue on the Shadowlands beta. Sub Rogue has been probably my favorite Rogue spec to play in the past, whenever it's been the meta of the three uh, specs that Rogue does have. So I was excited to take a look at it, and overall I got really good impressions, and I've asked a few other people who also play it, and I've heard really good things about the spec, so I'm excited to share some of the changes um share with you the legendaries the conduits as well as how the spec actually plays the first thing i wanted to talk about are the baseline abilities that have been returned to sub rogue we do get poison back through numbing poison instant poison and crippling poison so that's just a nice bit of utility that is added back to the toolkit um sub rogue hasn't had poisons i believe since like draenor so that's just nice to see that return then we have another ability added that is related to poisons, which is Shiv. It costs 20 energy, 25 second cooldown, and it reads attack with your offhand weapon, dealing physical damage and applying a concentrated form of your active non-lethal poison. So this will most likely be uh, a utility spell that will be useful in PvP, but a little bit less so in PvE. Another thing that's been changed is the way Pickpocket works. So Pickpocket previously was pretty much a useless ability, um, but now whenever you Pickpocket an enemy, you gain ingredients that mix in with your Crimson Vial, granting it extra effects. I haven't tested this too much, and from what I've heard, it's a little bit buggy still, but hopefully we get some cool effects. I assume it's going to be things like extra healing, maybe extra secondary stats, something along those lines. So Sub Rogue now has two maintenance spells. We have Slice and Dice, uh, which we've had before, and this just interacts with our toolkit. Um, it just makes us attack faster. And that has a few pretty good synergies with the passives that Sub Rogue has. And then our new maintenance spell that replaces Nightblade is Rupture. So Rupture works the exact same way as it does with Assassination. It's just a bleed that you put on your target. And at 6 combo point, it lasts for 28 seconds. One good thing about Rupture replacing Nightblade is that you no longer rely on having a bleed on your target to deal increased damage to it. Um, you can put Rupture up on your target if you want to. If you don't want to, it's not that big of a deal. I assume for min-maxing, there will be points where you want to Rupture instead of like using it on an Eviscerate. Um, but in general, you no longer have a huge deficit in damage if you choose not to refresh your maintenance dot on your target. A very important passive ability has been added to sub rogues that was previously a talent and that is find weakness. So this is now baseline um, and it works the exact same way as it did before. Basically, whenever you attack from stealth, you apply a 30% armor reduction to your targets that last for 18 seconds. And in tandem with this, our finishing abilities have also gained a bonus. If you attack, a target with find weakness on them with a finishing ability, you will deal 50% of the damage of the finishing ability as shadow damage. So this applies to Eviscerate and applies to Shadow Vault, um, which is a new AoE spender that has been added to our toolkit as baseline. It essentially works very similarly to Secret Technique, except that it's purely AoE. You don't deal bonus damage to your primary target. Um, it's a very good idea to add this to Sub Rogue because Sub Rogue historically has been pretty weak at just dealing AoE damage. They were very good at funneling certain targets, but just dealing even cleave AoE damage, uh, they were pretty weak at. One issue with this ability is that numerically it's currently super undertuned, um, so hopefully that gets fixed in the near future. Another very important change was made to Shadow Dance. So by default, Shadow Dance only has a single charge now, and it lasts for 8 seconds. And previously, Shadow Dance had two charges, and it lasts for 5 seconds. So this uh, introduces some changes to the sub rogue gameplay, as far as how many abilities we're able to fit into Shadow Dance, and how powerful Shadow Dance is as an offensive ability. And then the last change to our baseline toolkit was made to Symbols of Death, which gained an extra effect. Whenever you activate it, your next combo point generator will critically strike, and this applies to like Shuriken Storm, uh, Backstab, and Shadow Strike. Um, and also, if you take Shuriken Tornado, it also applies to that. So, it's just a nice little extra bonus that interacts 
pretty smoothly with everything that we have going on. So with that out of the way, let's look at the baseline talents as well. In the first tier, we got a new talent called Premeditation, which used to be a spell that applied combo points to your target while you were in stealth. Um, now, this is a new passive ability and it reads after entering stealth, your next Shadow Strike grants up to 10 seconds of Slice and Dice and generates two additional combo points if Slice and Dice is already active on yourself. So this is just, it makes your opener a little bit smoother because it, you instantly gain that um, Slice and Dice, which normally you would have to like generate some combo points, then use it. Currently, it's still, I believe, a little bit undertuned. I really wish that it generates some combo points as well, potentially, because on opener, it's not all day useful. This is way more useful um, during your Shadow Dance, because always during Shadow Dance, you already have Slice and Dice running. So instead of getting the 10 seconds of Slice and Dice, you will actually be getting extra combo points. However, during Shadow Dance, this will mean that usually you will be overcapping combo points just because you're generating so many. So on paper, it seems like a pretty good passive talent to get. Uh, however, in reality, I think a lot of the benefits that you would get from it do end up being wasted. A tiny change was also made to Gloomblade is that it now only applies Find Weakness for 6 seconds the same way that Backstab does. Then in the second to last row, we saw a change to Dark Shadows. It now increases the damage dealt during Shadow Dance by 15 seconds. Tooltip is a little bit deceiving. By default, Shadow Dance increases our damage by 15%. With Dark Shadows, it increases it by 30%. Um, so overall, this talent just is useful if you're playing a single Shadow Dance build where you're basically lining up a Shadow Dance with every single symbols. So you're going to do Shadow Dance less frequently, but they will be more powerful. And then in the last row, Secret Technique has been target capped at six targets. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that our Shuriken Storm and Shadow Vault are target capped at eight targets. So it's just the general target capping that they're doing in Shadowlands. So it makes sense that our abilities are getting target capped as well. All right, next let's talk about the legendaries and I will only mention the ones that I think are powerful or the ones that seem powerful, but in reality are not. So the first one is the Mark of the Master Assassin and reads while stealth is active and for five seconds after breaking stealth, your critical strike is increased by 100%. On paper, it instantly seems super powerful uh, because as a sub rogue, everything revolves around stealth. However, the caveat is that during Shadow Dance, you do not gain this benefit. And also after Shadow Dance ends, you do not gain this benefit. So in reality, you will only have it on your opener um, and whenever you vanish. So outside of that, you don't really get any benefit from this. So while on paper, it might seem pretty powerful for sub, in reality, it is not all that good. Next one we have is Akari's Soul Fragment. After using Shadow Strike or Cheap Shot, your target suffers a Shadow Strike from the shadows two seconds later at 100% effectiveness. Currently, this one is extremely strong. I do believe that it will get toned down a little bit, either the damage of our Shadow Strike or they will make the extra one you get from the Legendary be a little bit weaker, maybe 80% of your main one. But on single target, especially with the build where you take enveloping shadows, so you end up using Shadow Dance way more often, which means that you're shadow striking way more often, this legendary is absolutely broken. Um, it's a lot of fun to use. On AoE, it loses a little bit of value because on AoE, it's weird to be shadow striking just because it does more damage than like using Shuriken Storm. Um, but in reality, that does end up being the case, especially on Cleave, where you're not getting full combo points from Shuriken Storm. So currently, it's a little bit weird, and I think it's too strong on single target. Uh, but the downside is that it loses a lot of value on AoE. Next up, we have Finality, which reads Eviscerate, Rupture, and Shadow Vault increases the damage of your next use of the finishing move by 20%. So this one, in my opinion, is the one that's going to be good in Mythic Plus and on AoE because in those situations, you're always just alternating between using a Shuriken Storm 
and then a finishing move, either Eviscerate or Shadow Vault, assuming that they uh, change the values on it and it actually does comparable damage. So basically, getting extra damage on your finishing moves will be a lot more beneficial on AoE, where you're generating a ton more combo points than you do on single target. Alright, next let's take a look at the Covenant abilities, because Rogue has some fairly interesting ones. First one is Kyrian, and we have Echoing Reprimand, which is a 45 second cooldown. It deals arcane damage to an enemy, extracting their anima to anima charge a combo point. Damaging finishing moves that consume the same number of combo points as the anima charge deal damage as if they consume the 7 combo points. Okay, so this one, the wording is fairly uh, convoluted, so let's break it down on how it actually works. Basically, you use this ability on a target, and it will pick either 2, 3, or 4 combo points to supercharge. The next time you use that specific number of combo points, and on the default UI this will like glow, you also get a buff with it. So let's say you rolled a 3. The next time you use 3 combo points, it will behave as if you used 7. So, as an idea, this seems interesting because it forces you to pay attention to which combo point is anima charged um, and it kind of switches up when you want to use your abilities. You don't always want to use them at full combo points. However, in practice, this is extremely annoying to play with. Oh my god. S pretty much all the rogue specs generate combo points fairly randomly. You do have some sort of consistency, but in general, there is some ram randomness to how you generate combo points. So this means that sometimes you are simply just unable to generate the correct number of combo points. Let's say you roll the 2. Um, as an outlaw rogue, if you have a buff up that gives you extra combo points, you will never have 2 combo points because you're generating more than that every time you press a button. As a sub rogue, sometimes you generate combo points while auto attacking. Um, so it's just a nightmare to use in practice. While the idea is pretty cool, in practice I think it falls very short of what people are expecting from it. Next one is the Venthyr ability called Slaughter. Slaughter the target, causing physical damage. The target's anima mixes with your lethal poison, coating your weapon for the next 5 minutes. Slaughter poison it deals shadow damage over 12 seconds and steals 15% of the healing done to the target and awards 2 combo points. So this one is instantly a PvP ability to me um, because in PvE you rarely benefit from stealing healing that enemies receive since enemies very rarely get healed in PvE. But in PvP this might be pretty good. Also it does replace your lethal poison. So as a sub rogue we do not have access to deadly poison so slaughter would essentially act as a beefed up deadly poison. But in general, I think there's, the other Covenant abilities are a little bit better. So while this one might see some use in PvP, um, in PvE, Raiding Mythic Plus, I don't think it will be too useful. Next, we have Serrated Bone Spike. Embedded Bone Spike in the target dealing bleed damage every 3 seconds until they die. Uh, it deals damage and it generates 1 combo point per active Bone Spike. Refunds 1 charge when the target dies or is healed to full health. So by default, this is a 30 second cooldown, it costs 10 energy and you have 3 charges. So this means that if you have 3 targets and you serrated Bone Spike the first target, you get 1 combo point. If you apply it to the second target, you get 2 combo points. If you apply it to the third target, you get 3 combo points. And also whenever they die, it refunds the charge. So this is extremely good for like Mythic Plus, um, any encounters with adds on them, any encounters where you're cleaving consistently. Uh, even in PvP potentially, since targets do get healed to full fairly often, um, so you're getting bone spikes back. The way you use this ability is essentially just a replacement for your backstab. Shadow Strike is still better to press uh, instead of bone spikes, but bone spike only costs 10 energy, which means that it costs 25 less than your backstab and it will potentially generate more combo points and deal more damage. So overall, this button is super useful for Sub Rogue, and I'm very happy with how it interacts with the spec. And for Night Fate, we have Sepsis. 
This is a one and a half minute cooldown. Infects the target's blood, dealing nature damage over 10 seconds. If the target survives its full duration, they suffer an additional uh, amount of damage and you vanish from sight. Cooldown is reduced by 60 seconds if sepsis does not last its full duration. So this one might be interesting for builds that use the vanish legendaries, either the mantle of the master assassin, which gives you 100% crit for five seconds, um, or the legendary that grants you five combo points every time you vanish. So in those regards, it might be decent. However, in practice, I think it's a little bit undertuned compared to uh, especially the Necrolord one for sub. But this ability might be pretty cool to use on some of the other rogue specs. Next, let's take a look at the conduits and I will only target the subspecific potency ones. First off, we have Perforated Veins. Shadow Strike increases the damage of your next backstab by 30%, stacking up to three times. Um, so this one is just a general damage increase to our backstab. Next, we have Planned Execution. Uh, Symbols of Death increases your critical strike chance by 6%. This one is pretty interesting. Every, six per every 30 seconds, getting 6% extra crit for 10 seconds is pretty beneficial. And plus, Sub Rogue typically revolves around cooldowns. You don't do too much damage outside of your Shadow Dance, Symbols of Death combo. So getting any extra stats and extra crit in that little window is super beneficial. Then we have Stiletto Staccato. Shadow Techniques now also reduces the remaining cooldown of Shadow Blades by one second. So Shadow Blades basically works the same way as it did before. Um, and this just gives us CDR on Shadow Blades, which is nice to have since a three minute cooldown is fairly long. And the last one is Deeper Daggers. Eviscerate and Shadow Vault increases your shadow damage dealt by 30% for 30 seconds. So a lot of the bonus damage that we deal with Eviscerate and Shadow Vault, if an enemy has find weakness on them, is shadow damage. So that means that we just end up dealing a little bit more bonus damage um, if you play the spec correctly. So overall, these don't alter our gameplay too much. Uh, they're just nice little additions. And in general, they made some pretty good decisions on beefing up our abilities that actually matter rather than just random buttons that we press outside of our little burst cooldown and burst windows. So lastly, let's talk about the gameplay because that's, I assume, what everyone is curious about. How does Sub Rogue actually play? Sub Rogue playstyle has not changed too much from what it's been in the past. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. I've always liked the way Sub Rogue played. The issues with Sub Rogue were always that it was either too broken and it needed to be nerfed or it was too undertuned and it was basically unplayable. So I hope that they find the right midpoint. Sub Rogue still plays very similar to how it did before. You are a little bit less punished with the removal of Nightblade, so you can actually deal damage to enemies and your finishing moves will deal their full damage uh, since you no longer rely on a keeping Nightblade up on all the targets that you're going to be using finishers on. The addition, or the change rather, to Shadow Dance overall is pretty nice. It makes our burst window a little bit longer um, and more consistent, whereas previously our burst window was so short that it didn't feel very impactful. The Covenant abilities in general add a nice little twist to how you play the spec. Um, obviously some more than others, but... In general, I'm very happy with how Sub Rogue plays, and I still see it being used as that either very strong single target DPS that it's been in some past tiers, uh, specifically in Legion, or that strong DPS that can funnel AoE damage into single target. Obviously, with some of the nerfs that we've underwent during BFA, that is a lot less efficient than it was before but Sub Rogue still has a place in that environment. And especially with the addition of like Shadow Vault and the option to take Secret Technique, we do have quite a few things that we can actually do on AoE, which was historically Sub Rogue's weakest point is that we just didn't have AoE damage. So we were either really good at funneling or really good on single target, uh, but never really competitive on AoE. So hopefully, 
Sobrook finds its niche either in Mythic Rating or in Mythic Plus. Um, and I'm really hopeful for the spec. I think it flows extremely well. Sobrook has been one of the few specs that I played that feels like um, a complete spec, a satisfying spec to play because you're never really sitting around waiting for resources, especially with the most popular build that people are playing in raid testing. Subrogue feels very satisfying to play and I'm very happy with that. The few changes that I wish they made to Subrogue mainly revolve around either tuning. Um, I hope that they increase the damage of our finishing abilities and focus a lot more of our damage on Eviscerate um, and Shadow Vault on AoE instead of currently most of our damage will come from the Broken Legendary and its interaction with Shadow Strike. So I really hope that that gets fixed. Other than that, with the talents, we still have two pretty much useless talents that we'll never ever see play. And that is Night Terrors since they added Crippling Poison back. I don't think it's also required to have Night Terrors as a talent. They could add some other cool utility talent instead of it. And then the other one obviously being Alacrity. Between en enveloping shadows and dark shadows, Alacrity just doesn't stand a single chance. Um, it's a very poorly designed talent for sub in particular. While it might work decently for outlaw or it has in the past, um, for sub, this talent just has absolutely no place. And I really hope that they consider replacing it with something more interesting. Um, or if they're not able to do that for this upcoming expansion, at least down the line at some point, they think of a, a better talent to replace it with. That was the Sub Rogue preview. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and got some insight in how Sub Rogue is looking for Shadowlands. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about Sub Rogue? Are you considering playing it? Um, are there any changes you wish that they were still making to it? Because Sub Rogue was one of the classes that was the last to be changed. So I hope that they're still looking for feedback and looking for advice on what should be changed. I appreciate you guys watching the video as always. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more. I will be covering all the melee DPS and most likely a few of the ranged DPS as well. So keep an eye out for that in the future. See you on the next one. Bye bye.